Hey guys, welcome into the Stinky Truth Podcast. Mark Schler alongside my uh, co-host Mike Evans. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. Thank you for downloading, subscribing, doing all the things that you do. We appreciate you. Mike, how are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. I know you love nothing better than to just spread panic out there among a fan base. Sure. So Why would not? Should there be panic in Steelers Nation Ooh. after the anemic play of Russell Wilson and Justin Fields the other night? Dude, that is so that is so Russell Wilson. Like his the Rusties will sit there and say, Oh, he completed 80% of his pass. I think it was eight of ten for 47 yards. And you know, and so the 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 empty hollow statistics that he compiles that makes people that don't know jack about football think that he can play is incredible, right? So they'll stand on that, you know, they'll plant their flag in eight for ten, eighty percent. Bam, look at Russell Wilson. And then they'll say things like this. Like Mike Tomlin said, we've got to do a better job of protecting. We, what are you guys, a bunch of French waiters? We, Russell Wilson, has got to do a better job of understanding football and throwing the football to open receivers as opposed to pulling the football and taking sack after sack after sack. Three and out, three and out, three and out. Three sacks. I mean, it is absolute garbage. And when you watch the play, I mean, they're hitting little, they've got little option routes that are wide open that he's looking at. That's not quite good enough. Let me pull the ball and be a hero. You know what I think his problem is? Honestly, like, like one is, is, you know, he's, he's quirky, right? To being, say the least. Yes. And he is, you know, and he is, you know, toxic positivity, but, I think he wants to be a hero. I think he wants to be the reason. Like, if he had, like, honestly, like, if he had any sense about him, and I'm I'm being, I'm not just being critical for the fact of being critical. If he had any sense about him, he'd stand in front of the podium, and he, he, and he would sit there and say, he goes, I have to be better. My offensive line was fine. I got to put the football on the targets. I've got to read the defense. The middle of the football field is the middle of the football field for Russ. Will, you don't even have to cover it because he's not going to throw it. And there were ample opportunities to throw a ball to a guy on the inside running an option route that he decided not to throw it and took sacks. Took three sacks. I mean, you can't overcome Three sacks. Let his let his team in three drives to zero points. You can't overcome sacks in the National Football League. When you give up a sack, your odds of scoring drop into the single digit percentage or like ten percent, somewhere like right around eight, ten, twelve percent, something like that. I mean, it's it's virtually impossible. And I would just like to see you have the onions to stand up in front of your team and say, that's not their fault. It's my fault. Instead, Mike Tomlin comes out and says, hey, we got to be better in protection. And that irritates the crap out of me. It, it really, really does. Um, because what ends up happening is the general population has no idea what they're looking at. They have no idea. And so when you give up those that number of sacks, three sacks and three drives, whatever, um, whatever it, it was, I'm, I'm, you know, I don't have full context on the game because I just saw the highlights and the plays and stuff. But when you when you do that, the media doesn't know what they're looking at. The B writers don't know what they're looking at. So you know what the assumption is? Well, our offensive line really sucks. No, your quarterback really sucks. It's your quarterback that sucks. You realize that, don't you? Now, not that Justin Fields is much better, but who would you go with? To start the season, would you go Russell Wilson or J yeah. uh, Justin? Phil? I saw and and I don't know exactly the statistic, but I just it, I glanced at it on a television. It was on television was on. Uh, we were doing a, a radio show, and it said I think it was the last three seasons, Mike, that the the leader in multiple sacks taken over the last three seasons was Russell Wilson with thirty seven games where he took two or more sacks. You know who number two was in that on that list? I know the Justin answer. Justin Fields. Yes. Yes. With, yes. with 
36 games. I mean, it's, it is unbelievable. So um, who would I go with? Uh, there's, uh, it, there's not even a question in my mind. I'd go with Justin Fields because at least Justin Fields gives you the opportunity to develop a, an entire package of quarterback run and the play action that comes off that quarterback run. I mean, that guy is still an incredibly dynamic athlete, and at least I think there's room for growth in his game. Like, he's not an efficient drop-back passer at this particular point in time or this stage of his career, but at least there's an opportunity to grow. Russell's regressing. Like, he is, he, we are watching a future Hall of Famer play his way out of the Hall of Fame. That's oh, what yeah, we, he's 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 that's not. That's what we've watched yeah, no, the last three. This is right. this, that's what we've watched the last two years, and so far, one preseason game, he's on track. Yeah, he's gone from being on a Hall of Fame track to now being out. Yes, yeah. If his career ended today, he's he's out. All right. So while there is uh, understandable panic in Pittsburgh, ton of buzz, ton of optimism surrounding Caleb Williams in Chicago, already showing signs why he was the number one overall pick. I'm, I'm like, there's one, Mike, for me that studying, I, I, I really broke down going into the draft three of his games. And my concern was not his off schedule stuff. My concern wasn't athleticism or his ability to make a big time off balance throw, you know, scrambling to his left and throwing it back across like, like he has got that. You you want to talk about when when teams talked about him? Sean Payton at one point said, "You know this generational talent. There is the the talent. There is no question about the generational type talent when you watch this guy play. I mean, it's it's remarkable. But with that said, like how do you operate the mundane? How do you operate the boring? Because what you have to be great at in the NFL." is being on schedule and operating the boring. It's your 70-30 rule. 70-30 rule. 70% of the time, you got to be on schedule. Yeah. You've got to be boring. 30% of the time, when things break down, which they will, now you've got to be able to make a play. And where I think you get into quarterbacks who fancy themselves, you know, quote-unquote playmakers, what ends up happening is you get more into a 50-50 realm. And you're going to make... When you're in a 50-50 realm, you know, two or three remarkable plays that give you a chance to win a game late. But odds are you're going to make two or three really bad plays that end up costing you a game. And I think the odds are that more bad things happen over the course of a season than good things when you're off schedule too much. So... I think you have to be more on schedule. And I just wonder, you know, everybody talks about the weapons and everybody talks about the receivers they got and everybody talks about the tight ends. And, you know, I just wonder about their overall, the, the concepts. Now, I like their coordinator a lot. So I like, you know, I like that offense that they're going to run. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big plus to me. But how good can Caleb Williams be orchestrating the you know the boring from the pocket and I watched you know I watched a bunch of his his stuff and he was you know he had a few errant throws but he was pretty good underneath you know getting the ball out on time um but he was he was remarkable I mean the Bears have never had a 4,000 yard passer I know it's incredible but he was remarkable on the off schedule stuff I just don't want them as an organization because, you know, I want them to be able to run the ball, set up their play action, to be able to do the boring. I just don't want them to fall into that trap of, hey, we're going to play off schedule all this time. Because I think that's a recipe for injury and, and eventual disaster. But, listen, if I'm in Chicago right now, like if I'm a Chicago Bears fan, and I know a lot of Chicago Bears fans, Dude, I am going. I am going. Could we win the North right now? Like, could we? Could we press? They're a trendy pick. Could we press the Packers? Could we press Detroit? 
Could we? Could I don't we? know if they're ready for that yet. I don't think they are, Mike. I think I think like I I think they're gonna I think they're gonna struggle a little bit. You know, doing the boring stuff. You know, keeping plays. They're gonna be really exciting. You know, on second down, seven plus, and third and seven plus, because that dude's gonna keep them alive. But I, I don't think they're quite ready for prime time. But I will say this: I was a little bit more skeptical after kind of my USC evaluation because I just thought they all they did was playoff schedule. Um, I'm more optimistic now, having watched a couple preseason games, than I was then. Well, on one end of the spectrum, you've got hope and optimism and potential when it comes to Caleb Williams and Chicago, and then there's the New York football Giants. Oh. Mark, do you see any potential for a happy ending between the Giants and Daniel Jones? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Is he uh, is he taking a flight to South Florida with uh, Robert Kraft? <laughs> I mean, different kind of happy ending. <laughs> oh, oh my, my, my fault. Leave it to you <laughs> to automatically go there. As only you can. <laughs> I thought, I, I thought, I thought, you know what? You know what's funny? What? Here's the funny thing is, no lie, I wrote that down. And when I wrote it down, I was like, I wonder if Stink will, will go with the other happy ending yeah. definition. And leave it to you, you did. So you are nothing if not predictable well, in your childish type behavior. So but I'm talking about the other happy ending. Yeah. I just, I don't think. Listen, I, I said this months ago. With in regards to Daniel Jones signing a new contract, you know, that that was, I called it an Eeyore contract. It's a contract that you don't want to sign as an organization, but you just feel compelled you have to sign it because you don't have any, you know, you're officer and gentleman. I got nowhere else to go. If you don't remember the movie or the sign from Richard Gere, go look it up. I got nowhere else to go. Hey, what was his name? Uh, Private mayonnaise or something like that, you know, whatever his name I was. I don't know. Um, mayonnaise. Uh, I'm sure they'll remake it here with. You should go look at somebody that's else. 80s, that's an 80s. They'll remake it with like Zac Efron or yeah. somebody else to that's make a... it more current. Man, have you seen that guy's body, Zac Efron? <laughs> Dude, I don't he know, Zac. Mix in a cheeseburger yeah, or something. Yeah, Come on. Right? You Stop just make working the look, out all the time. Yeah, you make the rest of us look yeah look really bad. E yeah, eat a he's cheeseburger. Got, right, he's got a lot of a muscles. Bacon on it or something, yeah. He's I'm, probably 162 pounds or something. Just flicking. <laughs> um, anyhow, but, like, that is a, that's a, a contract that you don't want to sign. Yeah. And, you know, I know uh, they flirted, right, with the idea of moving on. But there's still that there's still that like well what if the light goes on and you know when he was scrambling around two years ago we made it to the playoffs and he actually played pretty well and we you know we had more quarterback run centric and maybe now he's going to develop from the pocket and we'll go get him who they get the the receiver neighbors we'll go get you know we'll go get the kid from um, LSU you know and we'll do like like I get all that and I get that he's been out for a while but man he made. A couple of abhorrent decisions and, and throws um, that for a guy who has played as much as Daniel Jones has played, just inexcusable. Yeah, yeah. And so I just don't know that that changes. You know, from the from the standpoint of um, you know, back in in the day and and back when um, you know back when I, I I covered them a couple times and the coordinator said you know he's a he's just a red stripe guy. I mean, like he's just you know that red stripe down the center yep. of the Giants helmet. Yep. All he does is stare at his receiver. That, that he's just red striping everybody, right? And the DBs can see you. You see where your eyes are looking based on that red stripe, and they're like breaking on balls and intercepting passes and breaking up passes. And um, you know, one preseason game, and, and we that's what he looked like. Now it's one preseason game, right. and he's coming off an injury. And, you know, you hope that they've increased the talent level and you hope their offensive line is better than it's been. And, and some, some, some of that is not Daniel Jones's fault. But don't you have to believe that they made the, the 
moves they made with their offensive line in New York with going after receivers, and and they're basically saying, like to me, this is Daniel Jones, drop a set of nuts, or we're gonna get rid of you. Either you're gonna show us that you can play, or that you can't, and depending on how how you perform this year, like I wouldn't at all be surprised. You mark my words, week six, Drew Locke is a starter Ooh, of the New York Giants. Hot take there. Uh, would you be surprised? No, no, no. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they make that move by week six and they just, they basically throw in the towel. Yeah. You know, it's Rocky, whatever it was. Throw the towel, you know. just Put themselves in the uh, Shador Sanders running. Right, right. Yeah. I've seen some mock drafts that have... Already for 2025, Shador Sanders going to the Giants number one overall. Right. I mean, Possible. Sure. I, absolutely it is. And, and I just think I just think that, listen, you hope that Daniel Jones, like, you, you, I know that they love him as a leader. I know they love him as his work ethic. I know they love, you know, the way he prepares and all that stuff. But, Mike, at some point you can prepare and you can lead and you can do all those things. At some point you have to play well. Right. Growing optimism that uh, Sean Payton may have his next Drew Brees in Bo Nix based on the first couple of preseason games. Way Dude. too premature? Or? Dude, at one point, I saw Sean Payton on the sideline. It was like this. <laughs> you know, his eyes were, he's batting, batting his eyes and like, <laughs> He was smitten. He was smitten. Like, he's just smitten. He's just watching Bo Nix play on the sideline, just like, oh, my gosh, that's my little fella. <laughs> and just like like I could see, you know, the visions of, of Drew Brees, yeah. like visions of, uh, of Sugar Plums dancing in his head. He had visions of Drew Brees dancing in his head. Um, as you know, and we've talked about on this po- podcast, um, my evaluation of the quarterbacks, and listen, like, you know, I play guard, right? <laughs> but you know what I know? I, I play guard, but I play with Elway. Yeah. I know what it's supposed to look like, right? Right. right. I, I know what it, it, it tends to look like. I've covered this league for a long time. Uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of coaches, and I study a lot of tape. Footwork and timing, accuracy, like the ball on time. And you can't be accurate if the ball's not on time. Man, anticipatory throws. You know, the stuff that that analysts talk about is beyond me because it's stuff that doesn't matter. But they make it feel to the general population that it matters. Like one thing that I kept hearing is, well, he doesn't have the elite arm strength you'd like. Because what? You can't throw a 74-yard Hail Mary? How many times do you do that a year? Twice? Who gives a crap? The ball is out, and it's on time, and it's accurate. He made some throws. So there's a, a route combination. You can run it out of two-by-one, two-by-two, three-by-one. You can run it out of a, a multitude of things, a multitude of things. Uh, I almost said multitude. Multitude of things. Mark it down. So they ran. Try to work in a focosity, too, if you could okay, at some point yeah. here. One, when he's in the huddle and he breaks the huddle, his focosity Boom, laser. So, I mean, but they ran a route to Cortland Sutton, and it's basically like everybody in the league runs it. It's Dagger. And all Dagger is is inside guys running off coverage, right? Outside guys got an 18-yard, what they call a dig or in-cutting route. And they completed that on a second down and 10 for 23 yards to Cortland Sutton to set up a touchdown in the red zone. And – it's a route and a route combination that, you, like I said, you can run it a multitude of ways, but it's a route and route combination that Drew Brees made a living on. And I would watch him complete that particular throw six, seven times a game. So you think about how that equates to points. Okay, you've got that's an anticipatory throw, right? Because you got to trust my receiver's coming out of a break, and you're throwing it right at a safety who's back there, right? 
and that's that receiver is going to come in in that window and take it right, snatch it because he'll be short of where that safety is. So that's a, a throw that has some trust value and some anticipatory nature to it. And like I said, I'd watch Drew Brees complete it seven, eight times a game. So the cool thing is that's 23 yards. And you start learning NFL-wise when you talk to coaches and stuff what an explosive, what it equates to as far as points are concerned. And so I'm having a meeting years ago with Robert Sala, defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers at the time, now the head coach of the Jets. And he was like, this is what explosives equate to on my defense. If we give up an explosive in the run, which it depends on the team you're with, but it's usually between 10 and 12 yards. So uh, that's an ex- that's considered an explosive run. An explosive pass is usually 20 yards. Some teams knock it down to 17, but let's just keep it at 20, mm-hmm. okay? So 20-yard pass or a 12-yard run. Each one of those equates to 2.8 points per explosive. That's what each separate one. Each one, one 12-yard run will equate 2.3. 2.8 points per okay. explosive is is what the form what the basic formula is. So it's really hard to score points in the National Football League if you don't have an explosive on a drive. If you're not getting a chunk play, it's hard to put points up. Um, what happened after that play? I think the next play goes to Timmy Patrick for a touchdown. Um, so those like those are are big chunk yardage plays that set you up and and give you an opportunity for momentum and also flip field position and all that stuff and Bo Nix and Sean Payton are on the same page and Bo Nix can execute the offense something that they haven't had here under Russell Wilson for 2 years and you can see you don't have to be a body language expert to see Sean Payton and the relief that Sean had. Like, I think that Sean will coach much better this year with some of the decision-making processes that, that were awry last year because I know for a fact what happened last year at times was you would have a play called or a play with a kill-it play called. So you'd have two plays. If we get, you know, two high safeties, we're going to this. If we get a single high safety, we're going to this. And then Russell would go out and call a play that wasn't in the play. That Like he would check to something that they hadn't discussed or they wasn't in the, in the you know, this goes back to what I talked about earlier, hero ball. So he'd go back and check to a play that wasn't even in the game plan. And he would throw it and you could see like Sean Payton seething on the side. Mm-hmm. So you think about how that affects you as a play caller. You know, think about like you go, okay, we got the two high safety that I look, we're running belly weak, right? And I can pretty much guarantee on second down and seven, we're going to get about four yards on this play. I feel really confident in that. So now I'm going to be in third down and three, and now I've got my third down and three list, and I'm looking at my third down and three list, and all of a sudden your quarterback checks to a fade and throws it versus a cover two, and you're like, you can't throw the fade versus a cover two, and it gets batted down and incomplete, and now you're in third and seven instead of third and three where you expect it to be. And now you're looking at your play sheet going, shoot, I haven't even looked at my third and seven plus plays, you know, and now the clock's running down. Now you got to burn a timeout, right? right? And you're like, then you're on the sideline, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) Well, I saw something. Uh, I thought I could take a shot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now you're you're frustrated as hell. And it affects the rest of your coaching. It affects your time management, use the timeouts, instant replay, I used the timeout I didn't need to use, and, you know, and all that stuff. And that went on consistently. And what I saw on the sideline is a guy that was like, I've got somebody that's going to orchestrate the offense. I heard... Uh, I think it was uh, oh, who's the, is Daniel Jeremiah? Yeah. Say, Sean Payton can play quarterback from the sideline with Bo Nix, and I love that analogy. And so he's got he's got his guy. He's got his, and I'm not comparing him to Drew Brees right now, but he's got his Drew Brees, a guy that can orchestrate the offense that he wants, that is super intelligent, that's going to do exactly what he's asked to do, and he's not going to make mental mistakes or change things or do things that uh, 
that are not part of what they they game plan that year. So that, stay, that game staying in the AFC West, um, the 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 Broncos may have their guy. The Raiders. I don't have the sense have their guy, but they got a guy, but a guy you like a lot. Antonio Pierce is going with Gardner Minshew as the starter over Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. Minshew almost got the Colts to the playoffs a year ago. Can he at least do the same thing with the Raiders this year? Put him in the hunt. I think that I think the Raiders are a sneaky team. Like I, I think they're a sneaky team. I think that um you know, Antonio Pierce, the guys play really hard for him. And he is really kind of, quote, unquote, a player's coach. Um, I think they have a lot of respect for him as a former player. So I think that's I think that's big. I think that when you watch their defense, they've got, in my mind, one of the premier top two or three players in the league on the defensive side of the ball in Max Crosby. And unrelenting effort. The guy plays with unrelenting effort. Um, is he your new number one guy, maybe, now that Aaron Donald is retired? Are you maybe he, ready to pass that mantle? To He, he, would, be, he would be in that conversation yeah. with, uh, there's, there's a few guys like, um, you know, that, that I think about uh, middle linebacker uh, Fred Warner would mm-hmm. be a guy that would be in that conversation for me. Um, so yeah, but he would be right up there. Max Crosby would. And the thing I love about Max, um, and I, I, I don't say this lightly. Um, Max is a defensive player. That's, that's unbelievably intelligent. And you don't find that very often <laughs> you, you don't in this like, league. You, you don't just like you just don't. You don't think just much. Does not happen very often. You don't think much of the intelligence level of defensive players. Do De- you? defensive linemen mostly? Defensive linemen, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But <laughs> like Max' ability to read stances, but more than stances, to read formations. Um, dude, he's got an awareness level that just jumps off tape. It just jumps off tape. Like you like you can see him calculating in his stance, feet, motions, everything else. And I mean, he is he he's right. He like he's he's not guessing. It, they're educated guesses, but he's right nine times out of ten. Like he is a really, really smart and good player. And I'm a big Gardner Minshew fan. Yeah. Like I just I think the guy, he's not prototypical anything. Not prototypical arm strength, not prototypical size, not prototypical strength, not like he just knows how to play. And I really think that guys love playing with Gardner. I think they just love playing with him. Yeah. You know, and it and it's funny in this league because you get those first rounders that don't really perform, and those guys are pariahs, right? If you're a first rounder and you can't perform, nobody likes you. Right. Like you are, nobody likes you. But if you're a late round guy that's got a little something to him and can play, everybody loves yeah. you. Like everybody loves the late round guy yeah. that can play. And so um, guys love playing with Gardner. And he's fun, man. He's just fun. He's just a, he's a character, you know, travels around in a sprinter van all off season <laughs> and a pair of jorts and no shirt, you know, just, I don't know what he does. Eats peanut butter sandwiches and, you know, talks to surfer dudes. <laughs> so, I mean, he's 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 a quirky dude. I he's like He's a quirky him. dude. He's yeah. a quirky guy in a good way. There's quirky in a bad yeah. way. We talked about it. Yes. I don't want to bel- uh, belabor the point. No. There and then there's quirky in a good way. Exactly. And I think I think Gardner is Gardner's quirky in a good way. Good quirk. Yeah. Russell good- Wilson maybe cringy, cringy, cringy quirk. Cringy quirk. Yeah. Yes. Uh, finally, Patrick Mahomes made some headlines this weekend with that behind the back pass to Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Like just, just when you think you've seen it all with Patrick Mahomes, but to me, the bigger takeaway Mark was just the fact that Mahomes and the starters were out there here. The chiefs are back to back super bowl champs. You'd think that you'd put them all in bubble wrap, but Andy Reid's got them out there. Mahomes was throwing 14 passes in this game. I mean, he was out there playing legitimate snaps. First and foremost, just stop. 
<laughs> right? You're making everyone look bad. Right. You just is it it's like, hey, look what I can do. And it's just the casual nature that he flips it behind his back for completion. And it was just like no big deal. I mean, it's stop. Right. We know you're good. Okay. We <laughs> yeah, know. That's right. Stop. You, we it know in. you're really <laughs> elite and you're back to back champions. And as much as I want to hate his guts, and I really want to hate his guts, I really do. I just want to hate him. I can't because I have so much respect for the way he plays. And I think he's a good, I don't really know Patrick, but I think he's a good dude. You know? Like, I love the fact. Did you hear Travis Kelsey? Because he, he said, Mahomes said something to the effect of, well, you know, Kel well, Kelsey didn't run the right route. Blah, 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 blah. And and so Travis comes back in the sideline and goes, well, I really didn't hear the call because, you know, he's got that voice. <laughs> and I didn't know exactly what he was talking about, right? So he just ran something and he threw it behind his back. It just is, you know, here's here's one thing I will tell you about football, man. Football is an arduous task. It's hard. Both physically and mentally, it's hard. And you got to have fun. Yeah. And there's something about Mahomes that's yeah. just fun. Like, that's fun. And I think everybody feeds off of that. But I will tell you this about Andy Reid. You know, in a day and age where many, many teams don't play anybody. That's right. And we saw it here on Sunday night when the Broncos took on the Green Bay Packers and kind of throttled them 27-2. to and the Packers didn't play any of their starters, and the, and the Broncos played their starters. And it's interesting. I think in today's game, you're so concerned about injuries that you don't do a very good job of getting your players prepared mm -hmm. for the season. And you know what? I think it actually leads to more injuries, right? All of a sudden, you're not going to play in the preseason, and all of a sudden – we're going to put you in a game for four quarters and say, hey, go. It's week one. I think playing, and I say it all the time, the games don't count, but they do matter. I think playing matters. I really do. And I think you can steal two or three games early in an NFL season because most teams yep. are ill-prepared to play. And they're ill-prepared to play for four quarters because they're not in quote-unquote football shape. So um, I'm a believer in what – you know, like Dan Campbell makes his guys play. Yep. Andy Reid makes his guys play, right? Sean Payton is making his players yep. play. A little different scenario because you got a rookie quarterback and you got some, you know, young players and you've revamped your roster a little bit. But I think it's really cool. By the way, just on our way out, great story. Timmy Patrick, who's mm. a, a Denver guy, probably very unknown around the league. Last two years, the first play of training camp, the last two years, the 22 season, 23 season, 22 he tears his ACL, very first practice of the year. Then last year, 23 season, tears his Achilles tendon, very first game, our very first practice of the year. Um, Timmy Patrick had four catches, had a touchdown yesterday, uh, looks the part. I think he could play that inside slot. He's tough. He's got attitude, that kind of Michael Thomas role, if you will, for the Broncos, but just um, it's a really cool story that not many people will follow. Tim Patrick, back-to-back -back years, season-ending uh, injuries on the very first day of training camp. Really cool to see him go out and produce the last couple of games. So, really, that's a guy that I'm really rooting for. Hey, the NFL is chock full of far more Tim Patricks than there are the stars like a, a, a Patrick Mahomes. So, mm -hmm. that yeah, that's, that's a story regarding a guy that's really kind of the rank and file yeah. of, of the NFL. And you love to see those players have that kind of success. No question. That kind so, of comeback. Anyhow, really good stuff. Hey, listen, for everybody involved in the Sink Truth Podcast, man, we are so excited to continue to bring you this show at least twice a week during the regular season. We're about ready to kick off football, guys. Um, and I've also got some big news coming down the pike. Um, it hasn't been announced nationally yet, so I'm not going to announce it yet. I'd like to announce it on this podcast, but I don't think I can. Probably not yet. Probably not until I get the green light Maybe to announce it. Maybe later this week. Maybe later this week. But it's um, exciting news. It it is exciting. It's gonna you know it's gonna separate us a little bit, but not on this podcast. It not won't. on this podcast. It won't.
but I've got some exciting news coming up later on in the week. Hey, for everybody involved in the Seek Truth Podcast, man, we appreciate you guys so much. Um, thank you so much for being a part of it, and uh, we will be back with you later on in the week. Hey, for everybody involved in the Stinky Truth, we thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more content just like this. If you want to see more of our videos, you can also be sure to check out our playlist. Let us know exactly what you think in the comments below. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much for being a part of that. Don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.